Hello. Welcome to another thrilling, splendiferous, spotlight edition of Give It a Shot. You just set off the ball call. Princes and princesses will come from all over to join the festivities. I hope you have something special planned. Planned? I have nothing planned. That's what we're dealing with today. So, I decided that I was going to, for lack of a better term, review this. Fisher Price, Precious Places. I... Guess I gotta give some context to all of this even before I get into the review. Because I... I as you can tell, I am virtually speechless. Um, Alright, just start at the beginning, stupid. Maybe that'll help. Okay, so... To lay out the context again, even though I'm just starting this, this is, just, this, this is how bad this is. This is just a sampling. Um, this is only the second DVD that I have ever received that came in a paper case. The other one being a movie I actually reviewed, uh, Pocket Ninjas, uh, my first year on this channel. Well, I should say of Philly Film Reviews. Uh, and that's still probably one of my lowest viewed <laughs> episodes. <laughs> Not that I ever gave a shit, <laughs> but it's just one of those things. And it is what it is, and I'm just, I'm just not gonna, rem I'm not gonna rail on that. I'm, I'm not. You know, the fans chose, and, you know, I made a bad decision once. It happens. So, I got this uh, at a place called Wonder Books. I don't know if the place is a chain or not. I just know that when my wife and I go home, to my home, my, near, uh, we, uh, we stop at a very particular Wonder Books in a town called Hagerstown, Maryland. And we buy books. I usually go in there and I just scrounge for DVDs. Well, they had this deal going on where all the DVDs and VHS tapes, yes, they still sell VHS tapes, were, like, piss cheap. Like, I think... I think this was, like, a dollar fifty, And if you buy three that are a fifty, you get one free. So I saw this and I'm like, I don't know what this is. I don't give a fuck what this is. I'm going to buy this because it's probably going to be free for me anyway. So I did. With the in intent of using it for a spotlight episode. Because I, I figured, easily, whatever's going on in this has to be something that could be easily reviewed. I was both right and wrong. I, I'm i going to attempt to review this. There's a lot of fodder that is uh, worth reviewing, but it's going to take every ounce of my uh, imagination to make that happen. I'm not saying this review is going to be any good, I'm not saying this review is going to be terrible. I'm not saying this review is going to be great. It's a review. So before I even get into the description of it, I just got to take a shot. Oh, 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 God. <laughs> All right. The other thing, oh my god, who the fuck thinks this is a good idea? 
Ah! Oh. <coughs> so, <laughs> so I took that concept of trying different stuff, um, and seeing what would happen. Um, so I got this thing called C4 Energy. I don't know what it is. I've never seen it advertised in my life. And apparently it's original Skittles flavored. Sure. It's got beta power. I don't know what that means. That sounds like something that, you know, virgin men have. I don't, I, I don't know. Uh, and something called Carnosin, which probably is short for carcinogenic, so this is probably giving me lung cancer as I drink it. Um, beta power. This clinically studied, naturally derived form of beta and beta betaine from beets helps maintain muscle cell hydration. Sure, whatever. I'm not gonna. I'm not. I, I, they didn't give me this shit. I bought this shit because I don't even know if this shit is actually anywhere beyond the CVS that I bought it. So fuck it. Anyway, getting back to precious uh, places. It's apparently a toy line from Fisher Price that I was never aware of. I remember Weeble Wobbles. I know Fisher Price. I know that they always had toys, but. Um, it was always, you know, for, for small children. In fact, I remember the, the Fisher-Price phone. I had one. In fact, most children, I'm pretty sure, have had the Fisher-Price phone outside of children who have been born in the last 15 years. Because landline phones like that just don't exist. So they probably morphed it into something like a... Ooh, like a smartphone. Oh, God, that's a horrifying thought. But, apparently, Precious places because I had to look it up because I was like what is this is this like a new thing is it old it's kind of old it's 1988 so it's been around for a while 35 years uh, and I was like okay well let's see what happens so you've got I'll just get into the story there's two episodes on this disc both of them are like 12 minutes long so they're both really short uh, the episodes are the princesses save the ball and Bubble Trouble. And I'm going to say this right off the bat. These stories are of no consequence whatsoever. These things are essentially 12 minute long commercials about play sets. Uh, they, don't really con they don't really drive a narrative of any kind. They just exist to exist. Uh, lore is hardly explained. Things just happen. And most of the things that do happen are features of playsets. Case in point, uh, the princesses save the ball. So Serena, who is the main one, the blonde one, and she's the princess swan, her duty in life now is to make sure that the swans are happy. And apparently there's a whole lore behind this, which is hardly explained, but we learn in Bubble Trouble is a thing. You're old enough to take over the Swan Palace and care for the swans who hold the balance of all love in the realm. And so uh, she gets to her new castle and she's like, ooh, ah, things in that. And she touches a stone, the stone goes down, and all of a sudden the ball call happens. And therefore there's going to be a ball tonight. And her friends, the two birds, they're because she has two friends that are birds or parakeets, and then she's in charge of these swans, uh, tell her, you've just initiated the ball call, so tonight we're going to have a ball. And she's like, I, I just fucking got here. I don't, what the fuck am I supposed to do? Like, can't I call this shit off? And they're like, no, 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 you got to go through with it. I just got here. We have to call it off. Uh-uh, impossible. Once the ball call is sounded, there's no taking it back. First of all, why in the hell is this stone just, like, right there on the bridge that she's, or whatever the fuck she's, like, it's just there. Almost like a, like a trap that you can spring in, like, an action set. But no, it does this. And so, then, because of that, they're just like, oh, don't worry, we'll call the other princesses. 
And I can't tell you a single princess's name because they're all horrifying to look at. In fact, right now, here's the other four. And I'll probably have some dumb nickname attached to them just for clarity's sake. Gabriella, the pony princess. Iris, the flower princess. Nadia, the party princess. And Willow, the woodland princess. So anyway, you got those four showing up. And then, of course, they're all just various characters of some sort. I almost wanted to make uh, Friendship is Magic references, but this came out in 2009, so I can't. So I can't say that, oh, this is a plain ripoff, because I can sort of see characteristics of others, but they you know that's general shit, and I don't really give a fuck. I just need another shot, because this is so fucking annoying and banal. <coughs> fucking hell. <laughs> it tastes like Skittles, all right. After you <laughs> shove them out of the fucking toilet and the fucking flying J down the street. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Anywho, so they are uh, trying to arrange the ball and naturally all screw up because they're all space cases apparently and they have their own ideas of shit. And it leads to a lot of issues that I have with this entire thing where the animals look way more realistic than anything else. And it's horrifying. Like, a lot. I really wish they weren't. But we're not going to talk about that yet. We are going to stick to this story. And so, they learn, oh, maybe we should talk to each other to get things done because... One of them is spastic, and she has all these ideas. Another one, she's going to lend herself out to everybody because she can't commit to anything. And the other three exist. Uh, one's really good with animals, I guess. She was going to make them do some crazy... Th the chipmunks were going to do some crazy things, but who gives a damn? It doesn't matter. They look weird. And so then they're like, oh, well, let's come together and do this right. And so they do it right, and then the guests show up, and the guests are just mannequins. I'm sorry. You barely had any money for your main figures. The background characters are definitely going to look like walking mannequins. And this is really fucking me up. <coughs> so, anywho, yay, the ball has been saved. That didn't even have to be initiated, but because you touched a damn rock, shit has to happen. And that's the same sort of bullshit that goes on in the second episode, which, I have to look at this again, bubble trouble. Whew. Yeah. They visit, uh, who's? Iris's, the flower princess. She's the, because again, I didn't really give a damn about any of these names. I don't even know the names. Because this is so nothing. This is such nothing. This is on par with those DVDs they were handing out for newborn cuties for My Little Pony back in the same time period. Like, it's that bad. So, um... Bubble Trouble. Uh, there's a peacock who likes to do tours of shit and basically says, let me show you all the features of this playset. And and he says, whatever you do, don't touch this rock. It's really big, and I can't believe you didn't notice it before, because it's frippin' huge. Uh, no! You must never, never, never touch that stone. Really? Why? It doesn't matter. Just trust me. Leave that heart untouched. But they do, they, they're like, all right, well, we won't. And they're like, you know, maybe we should touch it. I don't want to touch it. Well, we should touch it. Maybe it's a test, like... He could have been saying it just to test us. To see if we're independent thinkers. Which means he actually wants us to touch it. In fact, he'd be disappointed if we didn't. The writer. There was only one writer for each of these, as far as I could tell. I don't know, I did, barely got to the credits on the second one, because I, I couldn't get over... It, it just bad. Um... And they're like, oh, well, let's touch it anyway. So they touch it, and these bubbles come out, and the bubbles scare away the swans. And apparently if the swans, and this is part of the lore that's pretty crazy, if the swans are apart, the love of the world 
dissolves, it disappears. If the swans weren't together, the balance of love in our world is thrown off. Right. But what does that actually mean? <gasps> Look! It's wilting! So, let me get this straight. Love, beauty, growth, all of that depends on two swans who dare not be apart. Otherwise, shit starts to wilt. And you're putting what looks to be a five-year-old in charge of this. Because that was established in the first episode. So the stuff kind of bleeds over here a little bit. Maybe there is coherence. Or I'm just incoherent and I'm just making shit up. I don't know at this point. I really don't. Um, but now they have to go find them. Because the bubbles freaked them the fuck out. And they ran away. And shit got crazy. And then we learn that the pony princess, because there is one of those, her pony can turn into a unicorn after slapping something on its forehead. Probably a strap-on for all I know, but it turns it into a unicorn. And because it's a magic creature, it can find these other magic creatures. And, oh, look, these two geese, or swans, they might as well be geese, are out in the... Out in open places because we can't animate actual stuff and they find them and the balance is restored and the girls learn a lesson and they get reprimanded by the peacock and then things go on. Those are your stories. They're both 12 minute episodes. There's nothing, I mean the pacing is garbage. There's, things just happen. Uh, like, I, was I expecting substance? No. Was I expecting... Great animation? Looking at these covers? No. Was I expecting a whole lot of glitching? Absolutely not! This is where everything just goes horribly. Just the glitches alone warrant this. Oh, God. Funny thing about this. <laughs> there was a Starburst flavored one, too. If I live. <laughs> to try it. Maybe next episode. But for now. The animation. Mm. It's no duh bad. Uh, you can tell there wasn't a whole lot of budget to this. They, I mean, if the main characters look terrible, I can't really expect much out of anything else. Um, I'm gonna lay out a just a, a, a set of of issues. And I'll just have illustration because it's apparent this was a rush job. Number one, and how I can tell this, clipping. There is a lot of clipping everywhere. Like, it's worse than a PS2 game type clipping. You know, things are phasing through floors, phasing through skin. Uh, it's everywhere uh second there is flickering oh my god there is flickering a lot of flickering like hair just starts jumbling around for no reason dresses do the exact same thing where they're just around it's it, it it's just wow um my favorite though happened at the very end of the first episode where the five princesses are up at a balcony and they're phasing through uh, the beam, the, the railing. They're just, it, it's just there. And it's, it's like, 
nobody looked at this after they rendered it and they they clearly looked at this and said um we, we just got to get it out we just got to get it out got to attach it to some play sets and that's it because there was no quality assurance for this at all at all at all i mean they actually I, I, they have some voice actors that are okay for this sort of saccharine thing Although I thought one was actually the uh, the dude who plays Billy from the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. It wasn't. He's actually an anime. Uh, I don't know what, because I didn't really... I was just kind of looking to make sure it wasn't Billy, because I was like, oh man, I didn't know you were on the skids that bad. <clears throat> I hope this stuff isn't liquefying my lungs. So, and this is supposedly zero sugar. Go figure. So, there is nothing to this other than animation errors all over. And I could be talking about this the rest of the video. Of all the animation errors that I found. And it's probably, as a matter of fact, when I edit this, I'm just going to play the thing again and just every animation error I'm just gonna put up and I'm just gonna slap it on here um, because there's no substance to this and if there was I probably didn't see, listen or comprehend it because I'm just enamored by the animation errors these characters look worse than the characters from Tony Hawk's Boom Boom Sabotage uh, and that's saying something. Um, the rigging is so strange in some points. Like, these characters move in ways um, that just... Like, I, I swear there's no go-betweens in some of these things. Like, when they get on the unicorn and it's jumping. Uh, like, the way Superman jumps over buildings in a single bound. Uh, there's no, there's no go-betweens. There's no in-between animation, it's just whoop, whoop, whoop. It like it It just exists. Um and I think the worst offender out of all the characters is the Pony Princess. I don't remember her name. I I wanna say it was uh Gabriella, but I don't know. Uh because she has no eyebrows. She literally has no eyebrows. That's scary. That freaks me out. It's bad enough the, the orange-haired one has freckles, but they all kind of in and out like they're like they're living blackheads or acne. Just But the Pony Princess has no eyebrows. I don't know why, but she doesn't. Um, the Pony Princess also, uh, lives in a crayon sketched barn house, and she has the ugliest cats out there in existence. And, oh, that was another thing with the animation errors. Um, when the particle effects happen, like, they are so stock, like, you could just tell... Um, like when the kittens are released from pushing a button, they, that was like a template and they just flipped it on its side to make it happen. Um, the other one, uh, <laughs> was when in the beginning of, uh, of the first episode, uh, Serena, I think is her name? I don't, the swan, the swan princess, whatever her name is, uh, she hits a button in her carriage and T comes out, and it looks like the animation is buffering, kind of like what happens during Barbie Video Game Hero. Like, it, it stutters. Like, if your computer can't render that, maybe you shouldn't put that out. I mean, even with all the flaws that Trollland has, there were no frozen frames. Now, things are bad. The rigging is awful. 
but there's no stutter in terms of like it looks like it's loading. <laughs> but this, whew, yeah, um, uh, oh, oh. Uh. <laughs> like the only reason why I'm not chugging straight from the can is because the story's not painful enough. If the story was painful enough, then I would be chugging. Like this visually. is encroaching, in slightly encroaching, troll land. It's not the worst thing. But you can tell this was hastily made by somebody who was told you have like three weeks to get this done. Because there's no care in this at all. At all. And it's... It shows in the product. Uh... It's two episodes of toy commercial, vaguely. Things are horribly rushed because you've only got 12 minutes to tell a story. You can't really flesh out ideas. You've got lore that is disconcerting at best, especially considering the fate of the entire universe apparently rests in two stinking swans being together all the time. It's a lot to unpack. And I can already feel this is going to unpack my bowels real soon. I feel it already. This is not good. And I could go on a whole commentary about how these energy drinks that you kids nowadays just chug. I don't, I, I don't, I don't see it. But I guess if I was raised on shit like this, this would probably bring me the sweet release of death that I've looked for. I don't know why anybody thinks this is a good idea. Just like I don't know why anybody thought this was a good idea. But it exists. In fact, it's making my lights flicker. Just like the animation flickered. It's not Gina D bad. This is not Gina D bad. Gina D bad was just cringe. But this is close. Um, because these characters are lifeless husks, the extras are worse, and the animals look hyper-realistic. And I hate that. That horrifies me. The chipmunks frighten me. The damn parakeets are going to be my new nightmare fuel for right now. And the swans don't look awful, but the first time you see that pony, I thought it was going to suck out my soul. It's that bad. So. <sighs> what price. Does this. Does this do to me. I paid a dollar fifty for it. But I think it's done more damage than anything else. I mean. The picture up front. Is truly a thing of horror. And. I don't know. I, I, I literally don't know. <sighs> Maybe it's because this is Fisher Price and they're they're for toddlers that this was actually animated by toddlers. And if that's the case, then it's fine. But this is this is seem for 2009. This is inexcusable. Like this is this is this is newborn cuties level of bad. Except that was Flash. And this isn't. But... Ugh. Oh man. Oh no, I feel it. This was a mistake. Almost as much of a mistake as this. Oh. Huh. So... <laughs> oh. Oh no. 
Oh, oh no. Oh, that was a gurgle. I don't know if the microphone picked that. That That's not good. So, um, <laughs> I'm going to stop now and let my bowels evacuate. And this isn't a joke like at the end of the, re uh, at the, end of the reviews. This one's true. So, until next time, kids. Toodles. Oh, shit. Oh. Don't hit that button, stupid.